and this one is from James Wilson, hashtag Ask Dutch, a hashtag I have never encouraged, but people just seem to have just started doing it. Uh, read your, uh, reading your book, Tales from a Dirt Road, uh, I can't reach it, but it's available on Amazon. Uh, could you elaborate on Mr. Wrestling 2 not wanting to give you anything and the advice Frankie Kane gave you? Yes, I can. One of my favorite stories. I started off in Atlanta. Uh, actually started off for an independent group that blended into the major NWA office run by Jim Barnett. And Mr. Wrestling 2 was one of their big stars. So I was booked and they, they would do their TV on Saturday morning and it would play back at six Oh five. See the six Oh five was actually became a, a, a deal with TBS. See, they, their show started five minutes past the hour, which made sense at the, and it still makes sense really because you get a, you get away from that changeover point at the top of the hour and the bottom of the hour. So they booked me against uh, Johnny Walker Mr. Wrestling 2 on the morning show that was going to play back that afternoon. So, and he went out there and he did not give me anything. Nothing. I couldn't have got heat on him if I'd had a gallon of gasoline, threw it on him, threw a match on him. I couldn't get any heat on him. He wouldn't let me. I mean, so, and the studio at one point, they could probably get maybe 60, 70 people in there. Maybe you could hear a match drop. I could hear the announcer from the ring. <laughs> really? I'm in a ring. I'm at least 30 feet away or more 40. And I could hear what he was saying. It was just quiet. And I'm thinking, and he's, he's doing that on purpose because he doesn't think that I belong in the same ring with him. Okay. I got that. He's a big star. I'm a young rookie starting out. I got that. I can, I can accept that. But, uh, you know, when you rake somebody's eyes, I don't care. A baby could rake your eyes and you'd settle it a little bit. He didn't even do that. So I went to the back and traditionally it is wrestling protocol to go up to your opponent. Who's just done honors for you and say, thank you very much for, you know, for, for doing it. He didn't even come up to me. That was another disrespectful move he made, which I can't do anything about because of my, of my rank in the company. Cause I was at the bottom. He was at the top. He can do what he wants to do. And if I have any gripes and I'm just a, you know, I'm just a bitcher. So I, if anybody, they need to move, I'll be the first one to move out. So finally, I went up to him and I said, oh, thank you very much, Johnny. And he didn't even shake my hand. He just like touched it and went, yeah, yeah thanks, kid. And he just like this blew me off. I said, that motherfucker. Excuse my language. So I'm right. And, and we weren't, we were just starting that day. We have two more shows to do that day. It's Saturday. That's Saturday morning. Saturday afternoon, we would drive to Columbus, Georgia and do another live TV show. And then at night, we would go to two other little shows. So on Saturday was a busy day. We'd work three times on Saturday. And so I walk in and I look at the run sheet. Guess who I got? Mr. Wrestling number two again. Now, on the way down there, Frankie Kane was riding with me. And he sat back over there and he said, what happened in the match between you and two? I went. Nothing. Why? He said, Oh yeah, something happened. I said, no, nothing happened. He said, yeah, something happened. He didn't give you shit kid. I said, well, and he says, well, you, you, you'll learn. I said, okay. So we drove down. But when I saw I was booked against two again. So Frankie called me to side. He said, look, let me tell you how to fix this. He said, you want to fight him? I said, no, I don't want to fight him. He said, well, do this. He said, just tell him to take a headlock, take you over. And he said, lay down. Just lay the hell down. 
And he says, even in his damn head, when nothing's happening and the people are quiet, don't get up. I said, what to do? He said, watch. So I went out there, but, in, but then I went up to Johnny. I said, hey, Johnny, what do you want to do today? He said, ah, kid, just like this morning. Which said to me that he's going to eat me up again. So we got in the ring. Of course, people cheered, wrestling too. He was over. And we locked up. I called a headlock. He took me over. Boom. And brother, I laid out. I just lay in there. And the crowd got quiet because nothing's happening. And he says, he give me the little tug. I'm like, nope, not going. Mm-hmm. Nope, I'm not getting up. Then he said something like, come on, kid, get up. I said, Johnny, I said, listen, you got an option. <laughs> he says, you can either beat me right here, pin me, one, two, three, or we can get up and you sell a little bit and we can have a match. Okay. And finally, when he pulled me up, I reached up and blindfolded him. Then I started beating him up and he started selling. Now the crowd come up. Now they were saying, well, damn, this kid maybe got the, the best of him here. And they finally come up and we had a little bit of a match because he sold me a little bit, which means whoever you wrestle, at least make them look like a threat to you somewhat, or you have beat nobody. So that's what he did that morning. He beat a nobody on Atlanta TV, but when we went to Columbus, thanks to Frankie Kane, and he was called the great Mephisto one time, uh, thanks to Frankie, he told me how to fix it. So, uh, and when I went back in the back, you know, wrestling two came up to me then he said, thank you very much and left. And, and Kane and Frankie was standing right there and he looked at me and says, told you. And okay. Was, Which reminds me of another time we was in Macon, and I didn't know this at the time, but Frankie and Wrestling 2 hated each other. <laughs> I didn't know that. But one night in Macon, they had had a match, and they come back in the dressing room, and Wrestling 2 was madder than hell. He said, what the hell? And Frankie said, well, let's, let's go in here and talk about it. A little restroom there. They closed the door, and about 15 seconds later, I heard boom, 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 boom. Like somebody's hitting the door and I saw Frankie walk out, close the door. And then finally wrestling two come out about a minute later, had his mask on, but blood was on this side of his mask. Cause Frankie went in there. Frankie used to be a boxer and he just, he just beats, he just knocked him out. And for any, and I remember wrestling two picked up his bag and walked out the door and I didn't see him again to the next week. <laughs> So that's why he was telling me what to do with two, because he, he saw what two had done Two had just, uh, he had taken advantage of me and he didn't like it. So that's where that all come from. <laughs>